Hey everyone, here we are today. We're talking about section 1.8 of the AP Environmental Science Curriculum, which is primary productivity. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, again, standards associated with primary productivity and the big picture item with pro primary productivity is this. How does solar energy acquired and transferred by living things? We're talking about how do we go about taking solar energy and starting off all ecosystems by converting it to biomass. So what is productivity? Let's go through and define the idea of productivity. Productivity can be simply, uh, can be simplified down to the idea of how efficiently an ecosystem can convert solar energy into biomass. Biomass is referring to organic matter. How does it store it as organic matter? Now, different ecosystems are going to be able to convert uh, solar energy to biomass at different rates, depending on a couple major things. Some of the things that they need to uh, account for are the amount of sunlight. More sunlight means that more photosynthesis can take place. Uh, not only the amount of sunlight, but also the intensity of sunlight. Because areas like the Arctic Circle will get six months of sunlight, but that does not mean that they get the intensity that the tropics get. So tropical regions get more direct light, intense lighting, and therefore they're able to go through photosynthesis at a much faster rate, much more productive than tropical or than uh, polar ecosystems. How available are nutrients? If we are talking about photosynthesis, we know that we need the simple basic stuff that you've learned about already. We know that we need to have solar energy coming in. We know that we need to have water and we know that we need to have carbon dioxide. We know that we produce glucose and oxygen, but there are lesser nutrients that we need. We need nitrates, we need phosphates, we need potassium, among other things, uh, the micronutrients for photosynthesis to take place. And the other thing that we need to factor in is temperature. Temperature actually influences the rate of photosynthesis. So it's something that we want to make sure we account for when we're talking about comparing ecosystems and how productive they are. Now, when we talk about primary productivity, there are actually two different measures of primary productivity, what we call GPP and NPP. Now, GPP stands for gross primary productivity. And this is just the pure rate of biomass generation. All right, so the rate of photosynthesis, for lack of better words. How efficiently and how fast does this ecosystem take solar energy and convert it into organic matter? Now, NPP is the net, so we have to be subtracting something off of the gross. Um, and what we do when we talk about net primary productivity is we subtract out the cellular respiration factor because we know cellular respiration is going to use up that energy then to grow or just basic metabolism. Maybe if it's an organism, it's to help keep them warm or digestion, different things like that. So how much energy is going to be converted into um, the actual organism is based off of the GPP minus the uh, amount of cellular respiration, which we get our NPP. So our net primary productivity is how much energy really we get uh, per year. Now, how do we actually go about measuring our productivity? Well, it's based on an area of land. Okay, so usually it's by square meter and it's based on a time interval. So a certain square meter over the course of a year. And then we have to measure our energy value of there. And that's gonna be usually in kilocalories. So it's gonna be kilocalories per square meter per year. Um, I've also seen productivity measured out in joules, so it's something I just want you guys to be aware of. Now, here's a way we can look at the productivity of different areas. We can compare different biomes and their productivity. So up here, you can look and see um, on the top left chart, you see the different tropical rainforests, tropical season forests, and the productivity of those ecosystems, all the way down to our lower productivity ecosystems, which would be our deserts. Uh, especially in the extreme categories. Now, if you look at another one, here we're, here we're looking at our terrestrial in green and then our aquatic ecosystems in uh, blue. And if you look at the productivity here, you can see the swamps, tropical rainforest, temperate forests are all very, very high. If you look at aquatic ecosystems, estuaries, which we talked about that mixing zone last lesson, um, the idea of how, or in the previous lesson, how these ecosystems um, thrive on the mixing of freshwater and saltwater where they're incredibly productive as well. Uh, open ocean, notice how it is quite low per square meter. 
right? The open ocean is quite low per square meter. Now, if we continue to take a look at that open ocean, how does it compare? Um, it makes up a large percentage of the Earth, Earth's surface. The net productivity per square meter is very low. But when we factor in the amount of area of the Earth that is ocean, even with that low productivity, it actually has the highest productivity of any ecosystem on the planet. So it's actually really unique to see that the open ocean has the greatest productivity of any ecosystem uh, on the planet due to its immense size. Now, per square meter, it's incredibly low, but when we're factoring in just the overall size of it, it's quite large. And you can kind of see where else other ecosystems, tropical rainforests, which really make up a very small percentage of the Earth's surface, but they are very, very productive. Um, they all have that very high productivity. So moving forward. One of the things we also talked about when we talked about aquatic ecosystems was the idea of the photic and aphotic zone and how light penetrated in. Now we talk about different aquatic ecosystems and their productivities, how well they can actually take that solar energy and convert it into biomass. Well, one of the things we want to be able to talk about is how does that actually change with depth? And it actually does because visible light, remember when we talk about visible light, it's actually not just one singular color, it's all the colors combined together, all right? So when we go outside, that sunlight coming down is actually a combination of reds, orange, yellows, greens, blues, and violets, all together. Now, when you go into water, different wavelengths of light are gonna be able to penetrate to dip, different depths. Blue light has the ability to penetrate the deepest. It is one of the higher energy lights, uh, but it has the ability to penetrate way down into the oceans. Um, and therefore, organisms that are in deeper waters will oftentimes use blue light to photosynthesize more than they'll use some of the other colored lights to photosynthesize. And actually, if you haven't learned yet, different organisms utilize different uh, wavelengths of light for their peak uh, photosynthetic rates. All right. And that short little lesson ends our talk on primary productivity. Hopefully you understand the idea of how organisms go about generating something called biomass. Uh, hopefully you understand that ecosystems are not all created equal. There are different variables which are going to influence their rates of biomass generation. And if you fully understand that, you are in great shape. If you don't fully understand it, you know what to do. Shoot me an email. I'll gladly spend some time going over it with you. All right. Join me with the next lesson. We're going to continue talking about ecosystems and how productivity and the amount of biomass generated impacts their design. I know I'm excited. Hopefully you are. You like that lesson? I know you did. So why don't you go ahead and smash that like button right now. Go ahead and comment. Tell all your friends about how great that lesson was. And make sure you subscribe because I'm going to keep bringing you AP environmental content that you're going to want to watch or do whatever else those other YouTube channels tell you to do. And with that, Maloney, out.